lobby was very powerful. And they said, well, we're supplying the Nigerian armed forces with 15% of their, of their equipment. In Lagos, the British High Commissioner, Sir David Hunt, and his officials would say, oh, no, no, we're supporting... They didn't say no. They said, we're supporting... We're providing the bulk of the weaponry. And both were right. Uh, the British uh, officials in Whitehall were right in the sense it was 15% of the value and uh, the British High Commission in Lagos was right in the sense it was the bulk of the Nigerian army's equipment. In the flood of international misrepresentation of the situation in Nigeria and the machinations of the faceless enemies of Nigeria, Mr. Harold Wilson, Britain's Prime Minister, arrives in Lagos for an on-the-spot assessment of events in the country. With the British election looming, Harold Wilson wanted a quick end to the war. In 1969, Britain increased five-fold its supply of weapons to Nigeria. Okay, everybody on your feet up! Let's go! The motor! Come on! I'm a big I was there near the end, and the whole place was falling apart. The fronts were crumbling, the Nigerians were moving forward, Biafra was beginning smaller and smaller. But the, the Biafran, the Biafrans, uh, especially the officials and the people we dealt with, and the people we knew by then, they were marvelous at, at preserving everyday normality. The courts were still working in, in some places, and they, the, the, the judges and the lawyers wore their wigs and gowns uh, in the British tradition. I never envisaged surrender. I don't have to apologize for that. I am trained to fight and to win. What do you say? And out spake brave Horatio, the captain of the gate, to every man upon this earth, death cometh sooner or late, but how can a man die better than facing the fearful odds the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his God. I think I did that and I'm proud of it. In desperation, Ojuku mobilized a country boys brigade to raise morale by showing that a new generation was training to take its place at the front line. Fight on, brave boys, fight on! Heroes of our fatherland, pursue the enemy, harass him, destroy the invader. March on, brave boys, now that victory is in sight. March on, young men, beloved in heaven, march on. We are you country, we fight for They couldn't take any more. They were exhausted, obviously they were hungry. Um, and the enclave was getting smaller and smaller uh, as, as eventually the sheer power of the Nigerian army and its weaponry and its, its armor uh, took their toll. And uh, the principal uh, sort of sign to anyone, any observer's eye of the, of, the, of the demoralization was the disappearing troops. In January 1970, Ojuku left for a neighboring country. He claimed then, as he does now, that he went to negotiate a peace. I am convinced now that a stop must be put to the bloodshed which is going on as a result of the war. Our people are now disillusioned, and those elements of the old government regime who have made negotiations and reconciliations impossible have removed themselves from our midst. I have therefore instructed an orderly disengagement of troops. At the end of the war, there was a great deal of confusion, and I and another colleague had gone up to Doden Barracks, um, where General Gowan was going to at some stage, we thought, we didn't know when, um, take the surrender from General Effion. 
That's you again, my pleasure. How are you? Very well, indeed. That's you again. And it was, I must say, a most astonishing thing because How are you? they had all been That's in the again. army together before the war. This is the extraordinary thing about the Civil War. And while obviously the, the Ebo officers were a bit sh pretty shattered by being defeated, at the same time they were able to greet their their colleagues whom they hadn't seen for these two or three years. It was astonishing and it was really quite moving. I, Major General Philip F. Young, officer admin administering the government of the Republic of Biafra, now wish to make the following declaration. That we affirm we are loyal Nigerian ci citizens and accept that the Republic of Biafra hereby ceases to exist. The war lasted nearly three years. No one knows for sure how many died. Estimates vary between 100,000 and 2 million. People were so void of feeling. You, you had come at the end of three years to this. There was nothing to show for it. And yet you didn't know what would happen the next day because the Nigerian soldiers were advancing to the rest of uh, the heart of Biafra that they hadn't taken. And so people were both expectant, happy, disappointed. Feelings were mixed. People were looking forward to looking for their loved ones if they were still alive. Even families started looking for families. I now think that uh, Having a just case is not enough. You have to have the might. Might is right, after all. And uh, I must say that I'm also one of those who have begun to uh, to uh, see the uh, the intervention of uh, God in a different way. Uh, so. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, you can't be the same after going through such an experience. Everybody, because it was a war, talks about the military achievements and um, what we did.